Good evening. Welcome again to Sewing the Bourbon. We are back in Charlie's basement. Good to be back, Charlie. Good to have you. How are you? Eh. What are we doing tonight, Charlie? Tonight we're talking about a recent field trip that we made to Old Louisville Whiskey Company. Yes. As you can tell, we got some swag. We picked up a couple bottles. Oh, and got a hat. We picked up this really cool hat, which we're going to be giving away. <sighs> A giveaway hat. Yes, Charlie. We recently made a trip to a little whiskey company. Mm -hmm. um, Amin, the owner, was there, gave us a private tour. Yep. It was fantastic. He was so hospitable. Um, gosh, we spent quite a long time there. We were there. So to fill you in on how this came to be, um, we were filming in one of our fans' basement, David. Fan and, and friend. Fan and friend. And he said, you guys got to try this. Moreover, you have to go there. And we tried some bourbon that he had there. And then we said, yes, we absolutely have to go. So what it is, is, is a warehouse. And Amin used to own two liquor stores in the Louisville, Kentucky area. Sold them both. Bought a warehouse and started buying and sourcing bourbon from all over everywhere. Mainly MGP. And you can go there and pay... How much was it? 50 bucks? 50 bucks is 50 what we bucks. paid for a private tour. Six barrels out, whiskey thieves them right out, pours them in your Glen Karen, sip, talk, give you a, a, a history of the barrel, what's in it, the mash bill, the proof, where it's been, how old it is. It's an unbelievable experience. It really is. Um, and you'll see in the video, we're going to play it here next, but just a really cool experience. It's the coolest you experience. You get to, you know, you can, you can pull your own whiskey right out of the barrel, put it right in the bottle. Uh, That's what I did with this. This Charlie, is mine. Yeah, well, kind of. You kind of did. Shut up. This is my <laughs> bottle of MGP high rye, 60% corn, 36% rye, 4% malted barley, barrel proof. That's fantastic. 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 And everything, everything he has is at least seven years old. So we'll stop talking. I think the video is going to speak for itself. And so, unless you have anything else. I do have one other yeah, thing to say. Absolutely. Because you're watching this and you're thinking, they have t-shirts, they've got the bottles, they've got a hat. We bought all this stuff. So we asked Amin if, if we could record and Mike him up for our tour and he was gracious enough to let us do it. We had such a great time. We enjoyed the bourbon so much and the experience so much that we bought all these stuff on our own. So absolutely. this is not a paid advertisement, kids. <laughs> no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Without Are further ado, yeah. Let's get to it. Enjoy the tour. So it used to be a market brewery. This is why you see this big cooler in here. I took over the space a couple of years ago. I modified, there was nothing here. It was completely empty. Yeah, completely empty. So I installed some pallet racks and modified them to be my rig house. It's a lot cheaper than having this wood company oh, yeah. making it traditional wood. There's nothing different between the steel and wood, just the look. Right, right. Uh, but the importance is the barrels are sitting on their side. They're given more oxidation room, they're more airflow. So you actually letting them breathe and that's part of the Asian process. And then on the left side here, we do all of our by hand bottling. We bring one barrel at a time. We dump the liquid here. The only thing we keep out is the charcoal out of the barrels. We don't strip it from oil. We don't add water. We don't do anything. So the only thing is we do a half micron filter and then we pump it to the tank and fill the bottle. So everything you buy from us is literally straight from the barrel. Um, the only way to be. Fill it. Uh, Gravity fed to the filler by hand. We put six bottles at a the time. They get filled, we move them to the table. We put six bottles here, they get full, they stop. We move them here, put the cork, label it, shrink wrap it, and hand dry every label, and then send it out. Whether it goes out from our gift shop here or goes to a distributor to go to stores, liquor stores, bars, restaurants, and all that. So. How many states are you distributing in now? Kentucky only right now, yeah. Very slow growth. We don't want to expand too fast, too quick, and then you compromise the quality. We don't have that many, you know. There's 200 barrels, give or take, here. 
this is our entire future. I mean, some companies fill 2,000 barrels a day. Right, right. So, very small operation. So we're taking steps. We're planning on how to, you know, grow slowly and continue to have aged stock without being, you know, trying to pump 40-year-old whiskey out. So all the bourbon, we did two batches of bourbon. One, we had 19 barrels in it. It was seven and a half to 10. The other one was 13 barrels, seven and a half to eight and a half. So nothing younger than seven. Uh, I don't think for at least our price point and the quality we're trying to achieve and, and be at premium, pre super premium product, you don't, you can't bottle anything younger than that. Yeah, uh, I agree. And people, you don't need to be an expert to tell young stuff is young right. stuff. So, so today we're gonna uh, try four different mash bills uh, and then six different barrels. Two of them we did a finish with toasted French oak. We took a weeded bourbon, put it in toasted French oak, and then we took a higher eye bourbon and we put it into toasted French oak for six months. Mm -hmm. It changed very quick. Most people do two weeks finish and I laugh at that, but it actually really got to the point now six months in, you can tell the difference. You can tell there's something unique about the toasted French oak, toasted oak in general. Uh, because toasting the oak is a slower process and actually deeper penetration to caramelize uh, vanillas and sugar. So you have more flavor out of toasted oak than chard. Uh, you just need to give it time. Everything takes time and this is probably like one of the slowest process, slowest industry, but people trying to rush it and make quick money. But it is what it is. We're gonna start tasting bourbon and... So we're gonna start with weeded bourbon. I'm sure you guys know the difference between weeded bourbon and rye bourbon. Oh, Charlie's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> hey, typ yeah. Typically, I'm not a huge fan of weeded bourbons. I, li I like you already. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm a rye guy. High yeah, I, I enjoy my high rye. I mean, rye is a grain of flavor. You take it out. You don't have complex whiskey. Yeah, and if you want something that doesn't taste like whiskey, just drink vodka. Right. <laughs> we got that on camera. Yeah, that's going on a quote page somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so we're drinking. This is the youngest beer we're going to drink. Uh, Six-year-old MGP. We source from MGP mainly. This is 51 corn, 45 wheat, 4 malted barley. Smells like a weeder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What proof is this floating around? 116. So... We're not ready to batch these barrels, but our guests, if they like it, they're welcome to bottle their own from this one. We just won't be batching it. It's not bad, it's already yeah. turned in a corner, but I think more time will give it more, more not depth. Not bad at all. No. no. <laughs> it's a more flavorful larceny. <laughs> no, the only advantage I see in weeded bourbons is they tend to age a lot longer and they don't have, you know, harsh oak notes or anything like that. We, were, we just did an episode of Weller 12, and, um, or about Stitzel Weller. And Weller 12 is one of the only weeded that I've like enjoy that I yeah. drink, and I think it's because as it, as it gets older, it gets better and continues to get better. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, weeded bourbon typically age better longer. Yeah. Uh, so we took the same bourbon, same age, uh, sister barrel of this one, and back in August we transferred it into toasted French oak. So. Charred oak, looks like this. Mm -hmm. And then if you can hand me that camera, I'll show you what a toasted oak is. So this is, what do you see? A toasted oak, no char. Oh. <laughs> so charring is typically Depends on who specify char three, four, five, whatever char the distiller or the blender wants. It's typically 30 to 55 seconds of fire. Mm -hmm. The toasted process is a little lower heat and longer process. So what are you doing by charring or, or toasting the oak is you caramelize in those sugar molecules and vanillas in the oak. 
So when you toast, you actually penetrate a lot farther in and you caramelize those notes. So you go in four to six millimeter into the oak where the chart is only for about four millimeter. So the difference, the caramelization process is completely different because it's lower heat and longer process. The charring is different. So we took that same whiskey and then transferred it into French toasted oak six months ago. So now you're gonna try the same whiskey, same proof, relatively about 116, and you're gonna see the difference how the French oak or toasted oak uh, it will influence this whiskey. Kind of like the difference between baking and frying. Yeah. yeah. So typically American oak or North American oak, they're 80 to 120 years. French oak are government controlled. You don't cut the trees until 200 plus years old. Oh, wow. So tighter grain, a lot more expensive oak, typically is used in wine industry, cognac, you don't see it in the bourbon. We do, we, for whiskey, Asian, actually American whiskey does work better. But for finishes, purposes, as far as whiskey, this gives it a lot more depth and sweetness. You get honey and vanilla that you didn't get on the first one. Absolutely. That's a whole other animal. Yeah. yeah. Now that's how enjoyable we did, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just a, like you said, it's a, there's a lot more depth there. Yeah. The nose is different. I mean, it's like a spiciness on that. Yeah. Like, he may live here as a weeder, <laughs> a weed crazy. bourbon it's lover. <laughs> that's a really, yeah, that's, that's a really solid. And we both love finished, finished whiskeys. I honestly, I resisted to do finishes, um, but people love finishes, so we're gonna do finishes. Um, typically. Wow. Why? Because typically you finish whiskey for two reasons. It's either too young, and I don't have any young whiskey here, or too bad, yeah, and I don't nice. think I have bad whiskey here yet. Right. Hopefully I'll never have bad whiskey. So there is really no reason to, to finish. But I mean, like this is a six year old yeah. with the finish, it really helped it, mm -hmm. you know, pick up more flavor notes. I wish people could taste those like that, that don't like finished whiskeys because that is the the quintessential reason for finishing like yeah. that's that's good you know if you like weeded bourbons you may really really enjoy that but that's just a totally another yeah. animal so this is fairly fairly neutral uh finish like we're not right doing honey we're not right. doing you know any rum, rum. so this is a neutral oak that's toasted that we finish in the product and that one's really good uh -huh. so typically these brand new Whiskey, white American whiskey cask are two, three hundred bucks. Brand new French oak is fifteen hundred. Oh wow! They're not cheap. We bought them used, and they're still seven hundred dollar. So I've got to ask you, these barrels up here. Nineteen forty-eight. So those are Spanish brandy cask. They came from Spain in January, and we took eight-year-old whiskey, seven and a half to eight-year-old. It was distilled as bourbon in 2015. 2015, we had a big shortage in oak barrels. So the bourbon was Asian used barrel, so we can't call it bourbon, it's whiskey. So we took that and threw it into a brandy cask and we also threw it into Madeira cask. So we're gonna finish those to see what they do in a few months. We just put them in about a month ago. So it's gonna be- it's whiskey, whiskey finished in finished brandy in cask. Brandy and then into Madeira? Well, they're different batches. Okay. One is a brandy cask. Oh, okay, gotcha. One is a Madeira cask, okay. yeah. I love both of those. Yeah. Things. yeah. <clears throat> but uh, the 1948, those barrels were holding uh, 1948 brandy up until December. Wow. It was 74 year old brandy. Wow. Uh, one of the casks came with a little bit of liquid, so we got to try it. And it was the oldest spirit I ever, I ever tried. Syrupy, sweet like brandy. brandy. I enjoy all spirits. Uh, yeah, I enjoy more my rye and bourbon, but if there is good brandy, Armagnac, Cognac, I'll consume it. <laughs> not back. Yeah. What, what, did, uh, what those barrels run you? Those are almost a grand each, empty. 
Those are 30 years old barrels. They were actually built with American oak. A lot of the Spanish industry, whether it's wine, sherry wine, or brandy, they use American oak. Uh, so they were built in 1992. They held cherry wine for 17 years. Hmm. And then the last 13 years, they held uh, 1948 brandy. And then when they dumped them in December, we got six barrels out of 66 that they ever existed. And we were hoping to extract one or two percent of that brandy notes into the whiskey. Mm -hmm. So that is amazing. The history just in a barrel. Yeah. Like before you even put a spirit in it. Yeah, big story. <laughs> but the the seller, they they paint their barrels. Everybody asks why it's painted black. It's just for a look. There's yeah. nothing else. It um, doesn't touch the you. the spirit or anything. So. Hmm. So the third one we're gonna go to. It's a traditional bourbon, corn, rye, malted barley. This is seven and a half year, it was distilled summer 2015. This is also has a cool story because 2015, I told you there was a big shortage of barrels because of the inclement weather and they couldn't log. So if you can't log, you can't mill, you can't build barrels. They bought these staves. This is Colombian oak. Yeah. So seven and, a half seven and a half years later, you're gonna taste straight bourbon aged in white charred Colombian oak. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I've never had any. So this one is 75% corn, 21% rye. This is a very popular recipe from MGP. A lot of other brands, a lot of other brands used it. Blum Brothers is one, the most popular one. They use it 21%. But this one is interesting profile. There's something on that nose. Yeah, that, there's that something. Yeah. What is that? It's so different. So we used some of these barrels in batch two. Mm -hmm. And they were very interesting. Not only the oak is from different area that we're not used to see that, but we also, all these barrels you see here, they're all from the same lot. You see them all rusted out. They were sitting in a very humid climate, very huh. damp. So all the barrels went in, the whiskey went into those barrels at 120. Mm -hmm. They were all, everything we used in batch two came out below 100 proof. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Our batch two bourbon uncut and filtered was 96 proof. What proof is that? This is a little bit over 100, not much over 100. It does, I mean it. It has a really good lingering flavor, yeah, uh, but super easy to drink. It's like, yeah, it doesn't drink like a it's like, hundred per. It's like crisp, like re, like a there's, refreshing. There's a, there's definitely a tropical fruit. There's also yeah. like caramel apple, yeah. crisp apple notes. This drinks like a cocktail. Like it, 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 so you're not the only one mentioned it, but few people they're like is this finished product and i'm like no it's not it's literally straight from the barrel bourbon well, you get the sweetness from the corn but there's also kind of like a almost that that really crisp flavor that you get from the rye I guess. Mm -hmm. well i mean you have 21 percent rye so yeah. there's plenty of rye in this recipe i mean that's considered high rye in any most bourbons have 10 to 15 percent rye I see why people think that's a finish because there's there's just yeah. flavoring like almost like a like an apple like there's there's a green apple notes they're sure. very maybe that's where that crispness is yeah. that i'm getting like a green apple man that is a really that's and there's really something good. on the i can't i, cannot I can't tell you what it nose. is but i'll snap away i'm still drinking the weeder so okay. <laughs> <laughs> taking it's, my time with the weeder it's a note that just really stands out man that's a that's a unique one, because I've had plenty of MGP high rye, never had one like that. I really like that. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, if you think about it, 80% of the bourbon whiskey flavor comes out of the oak. So if you have a unique oak, and yeah, you're going to have something that's different. Cool, so. That's a cool story. And the barrels are a little, little smaller than your typical 53 gallons. They're actually mm -hmm. 50 gallons. That's awesome. <laughs> I like that one. They, uh, I, I enjoyed all the profile and the flavor that came out of that oak, mm -hmm. but was very disappointed because we had 
a lot of empty barrels. They leaked from everywhere. Oh, really? But we had barrels seven and a half years completely dry. Oh. And that hurts for, you know, small, small guy like us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that sucks. Hmm. So this is eight and a half years, 36% rye, uh, typical traditional American oak barrels, char three. So this is one of my favorite recipe. I'm excited for this one. I love high rye and this is one of the highest rye mash bills that's been around at least. There's higher rise now, but this is definitely the highest dry. You can, 36% rye is very high for bourbon. Mm -hmm. So 60 corn, 36 rye, four molten barley, 114 proof. Oh. I enjoyed this barrel a lot. Um, we actually entered the San Francisco spirit competition with this barrel. So we'll see what professionals and professional tasters and judges will think about this one. It smells fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good 36% ride. Oh yeah. my God. So this, the only difference between this and anything else, these barrels were, you, they were used in non-GMO grain mm -hmm. when, to distill the product. And I don't know if that helped in, a, I mean, it's kind of hard to say I don't know why they use non-GMO grains when they distilled it, uh, if a customer requested it, and then I ended up with these barrels, or there is a reason for that, but it has a lot of deep, dark fruit flavors that I typically don't get it from the same so recipe. I love this recipe a lot. So most of my barrels are actually, you see, all these are six and a half, they're 36% rye, they're gonna, Probably, hopefully, within a year when they hit seven and a half to eight, they're gonna turn, hopefully, get, get close to that profile. I'll be very happy if they get close to this barrel. So. That's, that is really good. Like, if you had to, like, if I had to describe, like, what's your favorite, like, fruity, sweet, rye spice, that's it. Like, this is. Yeah, this it does is checks like, all, them, all, all the, the boxes. boxes. All of them. Yeah. Yeah, and the, like the, the palate and the nose both. Oh, it matches. Kinda, yeah. It matches. Barrels. Our first single barrels was sister barrel, identical profile. Mm. We bottled it in September, so it was right at eight. September, October. It was right at eight, eight a year, and it was already beautiful as well, just similar this to this. Eight, year as well. eight, and eight and a half. Yeah. Right in that sweet spot. God, so yeah, these, all these barrels are going to go into single barrels. Uh, this is another sister barrel, but this is non-GMO, different cooperage. This is from uh, Kelvin down the street. So <clears throat> you guys actually should try this one. Well, if you say so. You insist. <laughs> well, let me empty my thief and then let you taste this. This is just turned eight last month. But the cooperage, you can tell, see how like the oak is a big, big component of flavor because this is different cooperage. So they probably source different oak, mm -hmm. could be different area of the country. It could be season less, season more. We don't know. I don't know. There's no telling. Uh, but this is same recipe, eight years, so close in age and completely different whiskey. You would think you will have very similar notes, but they don't. Everything about these two are this completely different. Same mash bill? Same mash bill, 60 corn, 36 rye. So the only difference is the cooperage. Cooperage is different, and then this one has six more months of aging. It's different on the nose. It's different, but it's still... Similar, little... but there's a, there's a little funk to this mm -hmm. one. A little mustiness. Yeah. Still good, it's just different. Yeah, a lot more citrus in floral notes. Yeah, a little spicier. Yeah. A little bit more so a lot of people spicy. don't uh, don't know or never really paid attention, but Seagram used to own Four Roses. Yeah. And this is the V yeast that Four Roses uses. Okay. Oh. Interesting. Even though if you look at the mash bill, Four Roses is 20% rye and 35. MGP is 21% rye and 36. 1% difference. That's the only thing. Now, obviously, Four Roses uses 
five different yeast strain. MGP uses just the V. I think that's the only one I'm aware of. And then MGP put that whiskey uh, 120 into the barrel, where Four Roses is a traditional 125. Boy, I like that one too. <laughs> I, do, I know, yeah, they're, I, they're, they're, so, very, they're different, they're but so I really different. like them both. Yeah. That one is like sweet, savory, mm -hmm. and this one's a little spicier, yep. citrusy, and a little more of that floral note that you get. Yeah. I really, this this reminds me of some of those. Like this, it's floral. funny because this one's a little more peppery. Yeah. Whereas that one had a little more of that cinnamon, like sweet cinnamon candy sweet and flavor. Peppery. To it. Bacon spices and the number four is also deeper in color. Same char level. Yeah. Just deeper color. but for all different reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the, this particular recipe, seven and a half to eight and a half, they peak and yeah. like, yeah, they just turn that. into like beautiful whiskey to consume straight up. Um, you're right, because if you left it in the barrel. It will pick up more oak. Yeah. You lose all uh, of that nuanced flavor, all of that, those nice floral notes and everything. Mm. Those are two. Yeah. Awesome barrels. The next one, we're gonna stay with the same recipe, 36% rye. Little younger, six year. These barrels, all these, they turned six in December. So a little bit over six years. We transferred it into toasted oak. So you, now you're gonna see the toasted French oak influence on a high rye mash bill. Yes. We, we tried the weeded with toasted French oak. Now we're gonna try high rye toasted French oak. These barrels were distilled in MGP, yeah. then moved to Tennessee for five years, and I pulled them to Kentucky a year ago. So they've been here for a little bit over a year. They went up in proof because they spent five years in Tennessee. They got exposed to a lot more heat yeah. and less humidity in Tennessee. So they got up to 122. Most of my barrels, they dropped in the proof. These went up in the proof. What proof is this photo? 122. So different. <laughs> So different. <clears throat> yeah. So I think the French oak intensified the rye profile. Yeah, I think you're right. Like it yeah. just big blows spicy. up. Yeah, yeah big spicy, spicy bold. Yeah. Now this is also a couple of years younger than the last mm. two. So you're gonna like, yeah. you're gonna feel some of the heat and spice because it's not yet ready to be where the last yeah. two were. I think it would definitely benefit yeah, more Asian. I was just experimenting yeah, with yeah. finishes and it may sit there for another year or two. I don't know. That's a tough act to follow for that barrel to follow. Yeah. Those two. Yeah. And then go to this. Big spicy. It's so, it's very interesting though. Big man. spicy. Man, that's good. And it just sits, mm -hmm. just sits on your palate. Mid palate, it's just like, yep, I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. You're going to need a water after me. <laughs> Let me grab your water for that. I forgot to grab some water. <laughs> Next one we're gonna try. It's Thank probably you. the most interesting mash bill you ever had. Okay, 100% corn. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I would be shocked if you ever had any of this. This is, this. these barrels are turning 10 in April. So they're two weeks from 10. They are 51% corn, 49 malted barley. Heck. The highest, malted barley any american whiskey i'm aware of unless it's a single malt yeah. typically you see 10 12 4 percent malted barley because it's the most exp expensive ingredient you're not going to see a lot of it in bourbon or rye this one is actually 49 percent malted barley no rye no wheat this is very very unique uh, i'm not positive but i heard the mgp stop making this um this is not for everybody. This one I find with all of my guests here is they either love it or they hate it. It's deep, amber color, uh, doesn't need any more maturation. It's, it's solid on its own like that. It's like syrup. Uh, mm -hmm. 
a lot of like malted chocolate notes, citrus notes. You still get in the vanillas in your typical brown sugar and in bourbon, but then now put it in your palate and see what, what are you gonna get. It's, it's an amazing whiskey. That's so good. That's oh really my good. gosh. 113 proof. Oh. I have a handful of these barrels. I bottled one a couple months ago. That, that was our second uh, mash or second signal barrels that we released. It was nine years, nine months when we bottled it. But uh, it's just super long finish, lingering Chocolate. flavors that you typically don't get from bourbon. You get them here. Um, oh, this is a like a pleaser even for single malt drinkers this bourbon is like it will change their mind because a lot of single malt drinkers they they tend to think bourbon is too simple right. you know weak whiskey to drink if you taste them on this they will change their mind this is a recipe that will please single malt drinkers have you tried the Jack Daniels the new Jack Daniels, what is it called? Single malt. Single, uh, triple, it's triple got the barrel biggest, malt. Longest slot. name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, honestly, uh, I wanted to try it and I just never chased it. It's hard to find. Yeah. I, I picked up a bottle at Christmas and we opened it and this reminds me of that. Mm -hmm. But this is much more bourbon forward. Yeah. Then uh, this is, that's, that is a great, yeah, really good. that is a great yeah. bottle. Yeah, this one is very, very unique mash bill. I, I, I enjoy it a lot. And when I bought these barrels, my philosophy, because I, I didn't have them in front of me, but I bought them, I thought they're gonna be really great blenders. I'll blend them with low mash bill of barley, throw it with wheater, throw it with high rye and create something, have more depth. But then when I received them uh, from MGP last year, like these shouldn't be blended, like they should s stay yeah, single barrels. A, so That is so good. And like you said, that's gonna appeal if you're a bourbon drinker. And a single malt you're drinker. A single malt yeah. drinker, it's great. If you're just a, a whiskey drinker, it's great. Cause it's just, there's a complexity there, but still has some sweetness. It's complex, but it's, Simple. Yeah, like does that makes sense. Yeah, does that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, man, that's really good. And it, what, what you say the proof is? This is 113. It, uh, like it drinks way lower, lower. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a crushable. Yeah, like it's just dangerous. Dangerous. <laughs> it's very dangerous. Just yeah. Doesn't need mm -hmm. ice. Doesn't need anything. Oh man. Mm -hmm. It blows up with flavor if you put a cube or water, yeah. a couple of drops of water. Definitely you will get more flavor out. Uh, but it drinks very well, neat as well. Like it doesn't need anything really. No, that's, it's just very like straightforward. <laughs> so anything we try today, if you want to bottle your own, you can bottle it. Okay. Um, I do have a sister barrel, a barrel of number six already bottled. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, if you like that, you can buy that or bottle this one. It doesn't matter to me. So. I know what he's gonna get. He's gonna get a weeder. <laughs> I'm going four and six. So you get the opposite of that if you want, or but I'm going four and six. That one was a close second, but I like yeah. that one just a little more. I do. I think I do too. Yeah. Six, I'm getting just because I don't have anything like that mm -hmm. except for the Jack Daniels. But the Jack Daniels is 100% malted barley. Yeah, that is a different animal altogether. That's a bourbon. That's a bourbon that drinks like single malt. It's oh, awesome. All right, you probably guys curious about this barrel, so we'll let you try this one as well. <laughs> so, this is uh, bourbon. Was put into the barrel 120 proof. Follows every rule to be to be a bourbon, just their Asian used barrel. Light color, low tanning because 
the Cooperage has already been used. So very mellow and easy drinker. Now it's been there in the brandy cask for four weeks. Start picking up like fruity grape brandy notes, sweet palate. So in few, hopefully in few months, gonna extract a lot more. But this is super easy drinker. So we're gonna use, we're gonna create a label, sour mash label. It's uh, brownish color. And we're gonna do all of our finishes product with them, with these like barrels. Yeah. How old is this? Uh, seven and a half. They were distilled May of 2015. So they're turning actually eight next month. But since we transferred this whiskey before they turned eight, we can't yeah. put eight. Like the Asian statement stops when you transfer that. So. It's lighter so than light, light in eight color. Yeah. Very light. Like like well, because they uh, use barrels, yeah. yeah, use barrels. So you're not getting you're not getting those fresh charred oaks. You're not gonna get that color. But still have a good structure of good whiskey. Oh, wow. It's aged for seven and a half. This mash bill is 81 corn, 15 rye, four malted barley. That's 81 corn. There's 81 no way corn, that's yeah. 81 corn. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. I'm just so I think, but I, if you told me I was drinking an 81% corn, I would think, oh, that's that going to be terrible. No, so this, the rye is still there. You got 15% rye. It's still like, you can taste the rye, but now the brandy start influencing like that mid palate sweetness and the nose is more complex and sweet as well in the nose. That's um, another dangerous. For that, <laughs> that's a dangerous. So for that port. to stand up against mm. what we just had, we just drank, yeah. that is, man, that's awesome. And how long you said you're gonna leave that in the barrel for? So I put it here four weeks ago. Mm. I don't have a label approved or printed. So it's gonna sit there for at least a few more months. And then I, even if I had the label approved and printed, I still wanna know what's gonna happen in two, three months. Typically finishes after six months, you're almost capped out. Uh, you don't really get much out of past the six months. You're still oxidizing and aging, but you're not really extracting anything from these barrels. So I'm hoping August, um we see like the changes stop and then we bottle it these like haven't changed in the last month mm -hmm. they change dramatically between the first month and the fourth and fifth month but right now it's very steady there's not much going on um and i think that extracted all the toasted notes already I'm assuming this is what's going to happen, but this is my first rodeo into finishes, brandy finish, Madeira finish. What proof is that floating around? 112, 113. Mm -hmm. Those are the two barrels I measured. They were lower 113, 112. I drank a lot of finish whiskeys. That was really good. Like, that's so good. It is, yeah. And I'm amazed at the color. Like it's very light, if yeah. Look at the, if you look at it, you're thinking, oh my God, that's... It, it almost looks like a Chardonnay. Uh -huh. Like it looks like a wine. And, uh, but so the barrels that came, uh, they were put in, you name it, Barton, Makers, mm -hmm. Beam, whatever barrels they, they were able to find, they filled them with this whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. It's like little orphan whiskey. Yeah. That is so, so good. <laughs> Sweet. Like someone who doesn't like bourbon or whiskey, you could give this to them and they would probably. Yeah, this is very mellow because of that used oak. It's very mellow. You don't get the tanning. You already used and extracted all that tanning from the oak on, a, on your first round of bourbon. And then really what you got, a little bit of color left in the charred oak. And then you just age in the whiskey. You're not doing much. You get a little sweetness, vanillas and oak, but not much, like super mellow. Yeah, mm -hmm. just yeah, fruity, <laughs> like just fruity, sweet. There's nothing not to like. There's nothing not, not just like the perfect little sippy whiskey. Yeah, this is will be dangerous, like oh, yeah. Porsche pounder. <laughs> <laughs> so 
your wife is your business partner, right? Yes. So how much do you rely on her taste and her... She's not a big drinker, no. but females have better yes. nose and palate. So she definitely helps me when we're blended. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she helps me with everything else. Compliance and <laughs> keep me... <on> <laughs> <laughs> Keeping you within yeah. the wall. Yeah. <laughs> What's been the hardest part of this in the last year? Like, is it compliance or is it just getting stuff or... I think learning about the business and reading the rules because, you know, we don't have deep pockets to hire an advisor for this, an advisor for this. So we're reading TTB rules, we're, you know, trying to follow those the closest possibly can. And it's like every page you read, you like... Can't oh my God, let me make sure, <laughs> let me make sure I have this, <laughs> this is how I should measure, yeah, and like, so, I think that's the learning process that we, you know, that's a little hard, um, but it's been a fun journey so far, mm -hmm. so. When you started with a liquor store. Yeah, so I was, I was actually an engineer by trade, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturer engineer for 10 years, and then I was really tired of, you know, working for paycheck, so I decided to do something. Uh, an existing liquor store in Old Louisville came for sale. And the guy was ready to retire. It was basically, if I didn't buy it, he was just gonna shut the door and just sell the building. He wasn't, he was ready to retire to be done. Mm -hmm. So I took the risk and bought it. it was but I took the store and built it back. Uh, consistent hours, customer service, bigger inventory, and it became like a bourbon destination because we're a mile, less than a mile from downtown. Uh, and then I opened a second shop, downtown Louisville, and then that's, I was like, all right, I want to do brand, I bought some barrels, but I didn't have like, you know, millions of dollars, I didn't go raise money i didn't want to do that because i wasn't really i don't like to do that if i if i gamble with my money i'll sleep just fine right if i you know pull friends and family or investors in and i don't do well that's not going to be good um so i choose to take slow steps buy a little bit at a time wait until the stuff i have enough inventory i have enough age stock and started the brand last august so it took me about seven years to start you just started last August. Yeah. I didn't it's seven, that. seven years in the making. Yeah. Seven years of work to get to here. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, if, if you put a business, if I did wrote the business plan and everything, I would have probably backed out. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But I bought barrels. I was like, heck, you know, money in a bank or money in a barrel. Yeah. It's, I don't think I should, you know, I shouldn't lose money. And that's how I kind of like. And then when I had plenty of barrels, I'm like, okay, well, I'm all in now. Yeah. So there's no backing. So. There's worse things to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, my thought is like, well, heck, the worst case, I have plenty of bourbon to drink for the rest <laughs> yeah, of my there life. There you go, yes. That's what I tell my wife, too. It hits the fan. Yeah. All right, Charlie, and I hope you all enjoyed that. It was a little long. It's a little bit different than what we normally do, but I feel like it was it was worthwhile to, to post this. And hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully, it got you excited enough to take the trip to Louisville and Absolutely. Go sample it's so much different than any other bourbon tour you're going to do. Highly recommend. Yeah, it, it is It is an experience that you cannot get anywhere else. If you go to Heaven Hill or Buffalo Trace or Barton or or anywhere and you're like, hey, can you just pull down some barrels and let me whiskey thief out? You know, <laughs> let me thief out of them and try a couple and then I can buy them. But I only want stuff that's seven years up. Right. He has a 16-year-old barrel-proof hazmat barrel there. It's 148 proof. Find that at your local liquor yeah, store, kids. Yeah, that. So, unbelievable experience. Okay, so we promised we would talk about, we're going to give away this hat, but, oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> I'm giving it away, kids. Now that Charlie's got his lice on it, maybe you don't want it. I don't have lice. No, about that seriously. Shampoo? So, it's a brand new hat from Old Louisville Whiskey Company. Very good looking trucker hat. Beautiful. And so, we need to get 500 subscribers. We do. We're halfway there, kids. So... 
the way to enter to win this hat is we need you to like this video. Got to click the like, the thumbs up button. Or really any of our videos. And subscribe to the YouTube channel. And then shoot us an email at sewingthebourbon at gmail.com. Put hat in the subject line. Let us know that you subscribed and you will be entered. And as soon as we hit 500 subscribers, we'll contact Somebody's getting one a hat. person. We'll make a drawing. We'll contact you and get your address and send you the hat. And you know what? I'm going to sweeten this deal just oh, a little more. Sweeten. You're watching thinking, ah, I don't really want a hat. But you never know what may sneak into the box that the hat is in. Maybe some cool things. Sounds intriguing. Maybe some samples. Maybe some of Glenn's hair from his most recent haircut. You never know. Toenails. We, it, that's I gross. did clip my toenails. Yeah. That's good. Your shoes weren't fitting. <laughs> but you never know what's going to end up with in that box with that hat. So, yeah. Like, subscribe, email us. So in the bourbon at gmail.com. Subject line hat. Make hat. sure you subscribe and like. And we are finished. We have taken a lot of of your time today and we appreciate you watching charlie you know what you got to do keep, keep your, your bone holes tight. tight good night everybody i'm thinking four and six dude you can't get the same ones Why? as me you can't just <laughs> pick your barrel and then tell me i can't pick the same <laughs>